The question is, how do I set myself up for success over the holidays when the holiday celebrations tend to stretch from December 23rd all the way till January 22nd? I'd like to start by first summarizing the recommendations that I gave for dealing with the US Thanksgiving holiday. So number one, break up the string of days where you'll likely be overeating into single events rather than one long event. For example, for the Christmas holiday, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Do whatever you like, enjoy yourself. Don't worry about tracking your calories. Try to make good choices, but you know there's no need to restrict yourself. Uh, on the other days though, you might as well at least return to your normal habits as soon as you can. So don't say, oh, well, it's Christmas day and New Year's Eve is in like five days, I'm just gonna do whatever. That can lead to holiday weight gain. If you just kind of don't break up those events into single events, you should do fine. Number two, maintain realistic expectations. Step off the scale until the holidays are over, don't weigh in. And don't go back on the scale until it's been a week since you've returned to your normal habits consistently. Don't expect to lose weight during the holidays and be okay with that. So number three, don't forget to eat the foods you still normally do. That means fruit, vegetables, lean protein sources, and make sure to get enough water and sleep. Just because it's the holidays doesn't mean that your diet should consist of 90% cookies. Uh, while the, that sounds fun maybe to you, uh, you still wanna get enough nutrients to actually feel good during that time. Uh, four, be okay with some overeating. You know, it's the holidays, people are around, there's lots of food around. Set yourself up for success by be okay with it, being okay with some overeating. Uh, binge eating though, where you're just constantly eating even if you're not hungry and you don't want any more, is a sign of an unhealthy relationship with food. There's no need to have multiple servings of every single thing that's being offered and then have multiple servings of dessert and then go home and feel guilty about it and then have multiple whatever in your fridge. There's no reason to do that. That's the sign of, of a binge eating issue and that's you'll wanna avoid doing that if possible. Five, once the holidays are over, if you feel like you could have done better, resolve to learn from the experience. But it's also important at the same time to not feel guilty about it. So if there were a lot of things you could have done better, learn from them, try to do better next time, but don't dwell on the fact that you could have done better. Uh, this is a learning process and perfection is simply not possible. There's always gonna be something you can improve on and that's a positive thing. If you're always thinking about things you can improve on, don't feel guilty about it because you're still critically evaluating what you've done and you're resolving to learn from the process and that's important. So with all of that said, I know that many of you are concerned with being able to do the things I mentioned during this longer holiday period and still try to be in a calorie deficit on the other days. And this is especially difficult because it's a long stretch of days with a bunch of holidays kind of in a row. I hear your concerns because they're my concerns too. So if the strategies that I laid out for Thanksgiving when applied to Christmas are causing you any stress, it's important that you move to another strategy that's gonna reduce your stress and will allow you to enjoy the holiday without fear, stress, guilt, anxiety. So the alternative strategy is to simply move away from an all or nothing approach. That means moving away from the belief that you have to choose between the two extremes of sticking to your current calorie goal or throwing caution to the wind and doing whatever the hell you wanna do and having a week long holiday binge fest. Those are the two extremes. Rather than continue to try to be in a calorie deficit, you know, during the holiday mindset and, uh, or just giving up and you know, having a binge fest, I'd rather that we set you up for success rather than failure. What usually happens is you say, well, I'm gonna be strict this time. I'm gonna you know, say no to all these foods. And then that happens so often that you literally don't have the willpower to keep up. Your willpower is drained so much that you give in and then you feel like a failure because you had planned to stick to your calorie deficit during the holiday and you couldn't. And it's not your fault because there's literally only a finite amount of willpower. And once it's all drained, you're kind of just left to your base desires. You know, your brain is saying, oh yeah, I would like some fat and sugar and carbs uh, that taste amazing. And yeah, keep them coming, of course. So you have to set yourself up for success and not failure. So what that means is success in this case is gonna be the middle ground between those two extremes. The middle ground is taking a diet break. And I don't mean to say that you're on a diet or off a diet,
but a diet break in this context just means you're not in a calorie deficit for a certain period of time. Instead, you would eat at a calorie level that's right around what you need to maintain your current weight. So for most of you, that would, that would mean raising your calorie level and still trying to maintain some semblance of control and not going crazy, but that's, that's the middle ground here. So I'm not going to recommend that you do something that I'm not doing myself. And as such, this is exactly what I'm gonna be doing for one to two weeks. Uh, if doing something like this appeals to me, I'm pretty certain it's gonna appeal to you too. So given that I'll have more free time and sleep and more sleep as a result of uh, you know being off for the holiday, I'm also gonna increase my weight training to include more sets and reps and also kind of changing up uh, some exercises to be the alternatives during that one to two week period. Now, changing up your exercise is entirely optional. You don't really even have to mess with that. You could probably even scale back your training as long as you're just trying to stay active as possible. Um, the holidays are a great excuse to, you know, binge watch Netflix, lay on the couch for a week. Um, you know, but at the same time, there's no excuse to not get out and just try to be a little bit active. And it doesn't necessarily mean doing something that's working out, just getting up and moving around is, is would it be helpful. So um, please keep in mind that temporarily upping your calories is not an excuse to go hog wild for a week. If you find, if you decide to go with a higher calorie level goal for the Christmas season um, and you find yourself going hog wild, please let me know immediately and we can talk about it. it it's possible that it, this isn't the right approach for you. And I'd hate for you to find out right in the middle of it and then not let me know and just go crazy and go hog wild and feel like you failed. So please let me know if this that that's the case because I don't want you to fail. Um, I also don't think you need to be too strict with counting specific macros. If you're eating at a higher calorie level, the amount of protein you need is not as important. And the reason for that is when you're eating at a higher calorie level, there's less chance of muscle loss. In fact, if you're eating at your true maintenance calorie level, there's probably not gonna be any muscle loss at all. So that's, you don't really need to worry about your macros. Uh, the only thing I'd say is don't go low carb. Uh, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but there's a specific reason for that. You don't wanna eat too low of carb. Although I'm pretty sure and certain that's not going to be an issue when there's lots of desserts and cookies and things like that around. So um, beyond that, I do think that you should still have some meals or days entirely where you're not tracking at all. For example, maybe that's going to be Christmas Day for you or New Year's Eve into New Year's or both of them. Um, I certainly won't be counting all of the wine that I drink out of a cardboard box uh, New Year's Eve. Um, because I'm classy like that. Uh, for clarification, I like expensive beer and the cheapest wine possible out of a box, just so you know. Um, a quick warning, if you do this, and by this I mean not drinking wine out of a box, but um, have days where you don't track and kind of do whatever, um, <laughs> you will see a scale change due to retaining lots of water weight and probably more salt and that type of stuff. It could be a huge swing. Um, I know in my case, um, I've seen water weight swings up to 22 pounds or more in, in one day. So uh, that's, about, that's another good reason to kind of stay away from the scale during this period. And that's okay. It, it's nothing to worry about. As soon, as soon as you return to your normal habits, it will go away. So the big question here is how do you calculate your maintenance calories? There are three ways you can go about that. The first way is a really fast and simple estimation. It's going to be less accurate than the other methods, but none of the methods are in 100% accurate anyway, so it's just a matter of how involved you want to get with it and how much you want to care about that. So essentially, to figure it out on your own, you would take your current body weight and you would multiply it by 12 or 13. Um, you may see other people recommending that this multiplier, instead of being 12 or 13, be somewhere between 14 and 16 instead. I know from my own experience in tracking my maintenance over the course of eight years at this point that my maintenance is let's just say with four or five hours of exercise a week and a daily walk of 20 minutes that my own maintenance calories are right around body weight times 12 body weight times 13. Uh, I gain weight consistently over time with body weight times 14 15 and that's just me. Um, it's likely a cause of having been overweight you're never going to have the same level of metabolism that someone that compared to someone that's naturally thinner or leaner. Uh, that's just an unfortunate 
inconvenient truth of, of weight loss is that once you're overweight and you lose weight, your metabolism does not compare to someone that was naturally that weight all along. It's, I'm sorry to say that, but that, that's true. And that's my experience as well. Uh, so the second way would be to use a specific formula. There's a bunch out there. They all have different various levels of being accurate. I prefer the Mifflin St. Jor, J-E-O-R equation. You can Google that. I'm, I'm going I'm to go through it really quickly. I'm not going to recommend you try to figure out what the equation is from me speaking about it. I'd really recommend that if you want to go that route, you just Google it and you pretty much just plug the numbers in and you're good to go. Uh, so the specific formula is to figure out your your uh, your your meta basal metabolic rate, which is basically what you burn being alive, laying in a bed, and eating all, and you know eating. That's basically it. No no additional activity. So to get that, you would take first what you weigh in kilograms, and you can Google you know what you weigh in pounds equals kilograms, and you'll get the conversion right away. Times ten plus six point two five times your height in centimeters minus five times your age in years. Once you have that number, if you're male, you add five. If you're female, you subtract 161. Uh, yes, and that does mean that your metabolism does go down slightly as you age. So, um, that, and that seems really complicated, really intelligent, uh, nutrition researchers have come up with this formula and from there you actually have to take your an activity multiplier meaning how active are you uh, for those of you with sedentary jobs you can multiply it by 1.2 or 1.3 and that will give you maintenance calories that are pretty close to what it actually is now the, again these are just estimations it's not like a fact everyone's going to have variances that kind of change the numbers but i'll tell you using my own information this equation gives basically the same number as me doing body weight times 12. So I don't know what that means if it's, they're both pretty accurate, but just to let you know. So yeah, that's an incredibly complicated way than other than just doing body weight times 12. Uh, you're not really going to be able to work backwards from me talking about it. You're going to need to use the actual equation and plug your numbers in. So the third option would be that if you're not comfortable with using the uh, really basic estimation one, or if you're not comfortable plugging numbers into an equation, just ask me. Uh, if you're currently working with me and you ask, I will include the answer as part of your uh, your next update. I'll, I'll help you with that information. So it would probably likely you'll get the answer on Saturday or Sunday. So uh, you know, if you message me, uh, just ask and I'll take care of that for you. If you're not currently working with me and you'd still like to know, message me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible and let you know. Um, so other than what I mentioned earlier about there being uh, psychological reasons, like, you know, needing a break, not feeling stressed, that type of thing, for wanting to take a diet break during the holidays, there are also some physical reasons why you'd want to take a diet break as well. So as you lose weight and get leaner, you f actually physically need to, to take more frequent diet breaks due to your metabolism. So there's an adaptive component that over time, your metabolism is gonna to adapt to a lower calorie intake. To simplify the physical reasons for a diet break, uh, when you lose weight, your metabolism adjusts downward over time to your new calorie intake. Some of this is due to weighing less and therefore you require fewer calories. Uh, there's also a hormone component as well. Uh, so when you eat at a calorie deficit, your stress hormones go up and pretty much everything else goes down. Um, you know, you get hungrier over time, uh, even though you're not taking in any different calories. Um, so lastly, taking a break now can actually help you stabilize your weight at a certain point, meaning that you'll, you know, that will be your new weight that you kind of bounce back to. So taking, like, making a bunch of progress and then stabilizing for two weeks and then making a bunch of progress and then stabilizing for a week or two will kind of help you smooth out the curves of bouncing up and down um, when you when you take a break or go on vacation or something, and that can help. Uh, so to summarize briefly, uh, don't treat this as a license to binge. Do make sure that you're not avoiding carbs. So let me, let me say that again. Do not avoid carbs. Don't track your macros strictly. 
You can even not track them at all and just try to hit your calories on days that you are tracking. Um, be okay with weight gain on the scale, but don't weigh in. If you happen to weigh in by accident, be okay with the number. It's going to happen. There's no way around it. It's okay. It doesn't mean you gain fat. It's normal. It's water. It'll come off. Uh, have some meals where you don't track at all. You know, you, you deserve a break if you're working hard most of the year round. It's the holidays. Enjoy it. Take a break. Don't track on a couple special meals and enjoy them. And most importantly, in general, enjoy yourself during the holidays without stress, regret, or guilt. So happy holidays, and I'll talk to you soon. And may the force be with you. I'm going to go see Star Wars on Friday evening. I hope everyone can get to go see it soon. Everyone have a great night, and I'll talk to everyone soon. Bye-bye.